on this week's KSP News Show. 1.0 enters the experimental phase of development, meaning release is only a few weeks away. And new camera effects confirmed to make your launches even more dramatic. All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jim Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening, and afternoon, my fellow Kerbanauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to the KSP News Show on this Easter Sunday. I hope you've all had a lot of chocolates and you're all really fat. I know I am at the moment. But let's kick off this Sunday, this special Easter Sunday, with some amazing news. And that is that Kerbal Space Program has entered its final stage of 1.0 development, Experimentals. Yes, your ears are not deceiving you. Kerbal Space Program Program 1.0 is now only a few weeks away, uh, with the start of the experimentals phase of testing. Confirmed by Kerbal Space Program on Wednesday when they posted this blog article saying, It's official! Kerbal Space Program version 1.0 is leaving the QA testing stage and we're moving to the final stage of testing, experimentals. The builds will soon be in the hand of, hands of a 100 person testing team who will put the update through its paces before release to ensure we can catch all the bugs that we can. Now, Squad have also come out and said that this experimental phase of testing, because of it, the fact that this is a 1.0 release will be longer than a usual experimental. Usually experimentals are usually sort of a week or so long um, just to sort of finalize any sort of bug fixes and anything that they may need to squash before the final release. is also when the media group such as Scott Manley, Danny, etc, etc, all the large Kerbal Space Program YouTubers get their hands on 1.0 in order to show off to us some of the new features. And as soon as those videos drop, I will be sharing them on my Twitter. Links in the description if you want to go and check them out. But coming back to my original point, uh, this experimental phase obviously because of the nature of release will be longer than say a week or two I'm saying probably two to maybe three weeks at the latest but obviously we can't um, we can't speculate on that too much because squad have always had a ethos with they their uh, with their updates saying it'll be ready when it's ready and all the development is finished so they are they're not pushed for any release schedule so to speak and I wouldn't stress to you guys to start saying where's the update where's the update both to me or to squad because first I don't know and secondly squad don't know yet and so once everything's in a stable enough um, state to actually release it they'll release the updates and I'm guessing um, judging by how long experimentals usually take plus the extra time that they will have obviously for 1.0 so that they can make sure it's a stable release um, I'm guessing probably 1.0 will hit within the next week and a half minimum uh, three weeks absolute maximum, I'm guessing. That's just my opinion, but let me know when you think the release date is, guys. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I am very interested to know. But on to this next story for today, which I think is pretty awesome. Now, with experimentals starting now, Squad are putting the finishing touches to 1.0, if I haven't already made that abundantly clear. Uh, this means just adding in general bits of polish, um, just a small bug fixes and what have you, in order to make sure that the the update is enjoyable for everyone who plays it. Um, uh, Harvester, in his week's dev, dev notes on Tuesday, um, has added in a new camera function. He says, This is something I've still been working on today. I'm adding a camera wobble system to allow cameras to shake and vibrate in response to external forces. Currently, I am already I have already implemented effects when pulling high G's, so rolling over the ground, and when intense aerodynamic effects are acting on the vessel. There are still a few other causes which I hope to implement, but even now, this system already promises to be a significant enhancement on how flying feels. So, to me, what this sounds like is that Harvester has been adding in various different uh, camera effects uh, to make flying and flying rockets. 
and flying planes, driving in rovers, what have you, just a little bit more immersive. We all know that when a rocket launches in real life, it exerts a huge amount of force, both on the ground and onto itself, that's how it accelerates so fast. This is obviously going to cause some kinetic energy, some shaking, shall we say, some shaking of the ground. And so with a camera, when you have a very large rocket, if it starts shaking and vibrating like it would in real life, your launches are going to feel one hell of a lot more dramatic. I think it could also be a lot like the uh, curb shake mod, or whatever it was called. One of the mods that when you sit in IVA view, the instruments and stuff all start creaking and start shaking along with the with the rocket's uh, vibrations of the engine. Just adds an extra level of immersion and just makes the thing seem a lot cooler. And I honestly can't wait for that. Um, with regards to actual flying with the aerodynamic effects, um, this could be pulling, um, it could be blacking out, it could be redding out, depending on your positive or negative Gs. And just, can you just imagine that, just flying uh, flying around in, with the new aero system and then pulling too high of a, um, pulling your pitch too high, going in a loop-de-loop -loop and then blacking out, or going in a reverse loop-de-loop -loop and, and redding out with all the blood rushes to the Kerbal's head on when the blood drains away. Can you imagine that and the screen like going dark or going really red? Um, that would be quite interesting. I want to see how this works, and I think this system, I think, is going to be quite nifty. Um, I want to see it in action now. Uh, thankfully, we shouldn't have to wait too long, because obviously the features video is imminent, obviously. And so I can't wait to see this system in action. A few other little things that he has added um, is track IR support for all game views plus independent toggles for each of those in-game settings. He's added field of view control to the main flight camera. He's added confirmation dialogues prompting you to save the current craft on leaving, loading or creating a new craft to the editors. Added a confirmation dialogue before overwriting a previously saved craft file. And, and part test contracts now round their altitude and, and speed envelopes to much more sane values. All of these are just small, very, very small tweaks to um, what's going to be an absolutely huge update. It's basically adding whatever they didn't bother to add in the last update, or just simply didn't have time to add in the previous updates. And I just, can, like I say, I, I know I've repeated this so much today, but I'm just so hyped for 1.0 at the moment. And and I know that you guys are as well. One more thing that Harvester has added in is the fact that Kerbals will now cost funds to hire. So your first Kerbal will be very cheap, but if you hire your, your 30th Kerbal, it gets more expensive the more Kerbals that you hire. So like, you could hire your, your first Kerbal for say 10 funds, but then it would be by the time you'd hired your 30th Kerbal, for example, it would be around sort of 250 funds, and it would go up in sort of a laddered system like that. And it means you've got to put a lot more thought into who you hire. So that's a good habit to get into before 1.0 actually releases. But yeah guys, that's pretty much going to round it off for this week's episode of the KSP News Show. It's been short and sweet for once, thank god. Um, in case you're wondering, up in the top right hand corner, should I say, there is my Snapchat ghost. If you scan that, you can follow me on Snapchat, follow my stories and all that stuff. Keep up to date with my rather sad life. And keep up to date with 1.0 and that by following me on Twitter because I usually post the latest updates on there. But yeah guys, thanks very much for watching. If you did enjoy, remember to like and subscribe. This is Jimmy Kerman signing off and as always, stay classy.